Shalom. I want to begin this lesson by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rakakadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Much respect to the brothers laboring worldwide in truth and sincerity. Salutations to the believers out there, to the hopeful elect who's believing on the words of Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Coming at you with another lesson. Lord willing, it's edifying. And uh, I have this video queued up, and it's going to go into um, how the super rich are preparing for the day of judgment, okay? Let's get a quick scripture, and then we'll play the video, and then we'll get into more of the scriptures, okay? This is Psalms, excuse me, Isaiah chapter 2 and verse 10. Enter into the rock and hide thee in the dust for the fear of the Lord, Yahweh by Shavashah, and for the glory of his majesty. The lofty looks of man shall be humbled, and the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. Yeah, what is that day? The day of judgment. Okay, as it says right here, the day of reckoning coming, right? For the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty and upon everyone that is lifted up and he shall be brought low. Yeah, who is this proud and lofty? The Edomites, okay, the so-called white man, right? And the Lord said, well, they're going to be hiding in the rocks, okay? <clears throat> Let me jump down a bit. Verse, you know what? Let's continue to read. And upon all the cedars, that are high and lifted up, and upon all the oaks of Bashan, upon all the high mountains, and upon all the hills that are lifted up. Yeah, those high mountains, those governments, those hills, those smaller governments, right? And upon every high tower, and upon every fence wall, and upon all of the ships of Tarshish, and upon all the pleasant pictures. And the loftiness of man shall be bowed down, and the haughtiness of men shall be made low. And the Lord, Yahweh Bashah alone, shall be exalted in that day. And the idols he shall utterly abolish. Yeah, the idols. All right, your, your, your so-called people who you look up to, plus these deities that you, you claim are uh, our Lord and Savior. Yahweh by Shavasha, yeah, the, the Lord says he's going to utterly abolish them, okay? Verse 19, and this is the point. And they shall go into the holes of the rocks and into the caves of the earth for the fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty when he shall arise to shake terribly the earth. Yeah, how is he going to shake terribly the earth with those ICBM missiles, okay? Let's play a little bit of this video. I do not own the rights to this video. This is for educational purposes only. I do not own the rights to this video. This video is called Inside the Doomsday Bunker for the Super Rich. Okay? And it was done uh, July, <clears throat> I believe July 6, 2020, Year of Prophecy. As you can see, this place is pretty much unchanged from the Cold War. This is a converted missile silo. How much can this place withstand? It was engineered to withstand a 10 kiloton nuclear warhead. When it comes to the apocalypse, nothing's quite as terrifying as nuclear war. So when the nuclear apocalypse comes, are we going to get blasted back into the Stone Age? Or can we use our heads and survive the end of days with the help of technology? Here in beautiful Colorado, one man is already thinking about the end of the world. 
Professor Brian Toon is an atmospheric scientist and an expert on nuclear winter. Brian, level with me. How likely is an all-out nuclear war and should I be finding a bunker right now? You never know for sure because that's one of the real terrifying things here is that one person in the United States and one person in Russia could decide all by themselves to have a nuclear conflict. How many nukes are... And that's the spirit. Why would he say Russia and America? Because Russia is the one who's going to bring down America. That's the spirit. Are there around the world? Who, who has them? There are about 14,000 nuclear weapons in the world. More than 1,000 of them are held by um, Britain, uh, France, India, Pakistan, Israel, and China. All, each of those countries has two or 300. Then Russia and the United States have 90% of the uh, missiles. So the lesson is everyone has nukes now. But what exactly happens when these bombs go off? If you're knocking over concrete buildings, you're going to blow people to pieces. So there's a range of going out from distance in which you die from the blast wave tearing you to pieces, the radiation burning you up, the light wave burning you or catching you on fire. What happens when day one, a week later, a year later, what are we looking at? Well, when a nuclear weapon explodes, it sends out a burst of light. It's like bringing a piece of the sun, which is nuclear explosions happening, down to the earth. And that burst of light catches everything around it on fire. That fire sends huge amounts of smoke into the stratosphere. But because it doesn't rain up there, it takes years for that smoke to clear, creating a nuclear winter. Black sunlight from reaching the ground, which of course makes it cool off. It gets cold at the ground. And people expect that about 90% of the global population will die from starvation because there won't be anything to eat. The more I thought about nuclear winter, the more terrified I became. I needed a plan to survive the nuclear apocalypse before the world went to hell. So where do you go when you want to get off the grid? Kansas. Here in the heartland of rural Kansas, one man is offering millionaire preppers a high-tech way to avoid the apocalypse. Welcome to the survival condo. This former Cold War missile silo is now a luxury bunker built for the super rich. Going off the grid no longer means giving up a lavish lifestyle. Think of it kind of like Cribs in camo. From the outside, the security cameras, armoured guard and eight-ton steel doors are the only sign you're entering a top-secret facility. In fact, this place is so top-secret, I can't even tell you where it is. I'm here to meet the man behind the condo, Larry Hall, who's going to give me a full tour. So, Claire, those doors that we just came in through weigh eight tons each. So they're 16,000 pounds. They're uh, armored steel filled with concrete. So you definitely hear that safety bang when the door closes. Inside, this 54,000 square foot complex boasts everything you could need to live through the end of days. Okay, let's get down and uh, show you what's underground. Okay. Oh. You're not in Kansas anymore. We're going beneath Kansas. The survival condo is spread across 15 floors and goes 200 feet underground. At the top, under the dome, are the recreation facilities like the pet park and climbing wall. Underneath that are the mechanical level, medical bay and food stores, with luxury living quarters spread across the next seven floors. At the bottom, a further four floors house a classroom, a library, a bar, a gym and a cinema. All right, so I'll show you a full floor unit. This is a three bedroom, two bath unit, and they have nine foot ceilings. You see we've got all these uh, high end uh, stainless steel appliances. And most importantly, even though I'm 11 stories underground, I've still got a window. When these are windows are all on, you're coming out of the units and you see the birds flying and the sunset coming up and the rain and the weather changing. That's the input your brain is used to. 
you look in here, you can see that there's the um, bidet toilets, and we have a jacuzzi tub and a shower with the side jets. Why don't you, why do you have bidet toilets instead of regular toilets? Well, interestingly, we did a little calculation, and the max occupancy for this facility is 75 people. And if we put toilet paper for 75 people for five years, that volume of toilet paper would take an entire floor to store just toilet paper. And that square footage cost about $3 million to build. Okay, so, the day it is. The day it is. The day it is. Pretty comfy. These are good mattresses. Welcome to the paradise of the beach. It's a saltwater pool. It's completely computer controlled. The pool is kept at 82 degrees. People do not expect to see a resort pool in an underground bunker. And we get drop jaws every time people, they go, are you kidding me? Another thing I wasn't expecting underground, so much space. You've got a 24 foot rock climbing wall. This is a fun room. This is an indoor shooting range. You can uh, come down here and shoot everything from handguns up to 308 caliber sniper rifles in here. So under proper supervision. Of course. So we pro <laughs> you saw gotta always have his uh his sword, his his blessing. All right, one of his swords is what the modern day gun. Okay, and as you see, the wicked elite are preparing to go underground because they know that they have but a short time. Now, this is on the low end of the so-called millionaires, okay? Keep in mind, this ain't even the plans of the global elites, okay? They're in uh, things called dumb, deep underground military bases, all right? And this was a converted military base, all right? A converted military silo. Fully trained people. So we have this uh, media database with about 3,000 movies on it. Anything in particular you're interested in? Do you have Armageddon? Oh, we got everything. We got that. All right. So why would she request Armageddon, man? If you look into viewing things in spiritual lenses, everything that that um, being spoken of is written in the Bible. Okay, we're gonna play a little bit more of this video and then we'll get back to the scriptures. Why would she say Armageddon? Okay, let's roll that. All right, but the apocalypse isn't all fun and games. There's a schoolroom in the bunker so kids from K through 12 can take self guided lessons on brand new IMAX. And because this is the 21st century, there's no worries if the internet goes out. This whole facility has an internet. And when you buy a unit here, one of the things that you fill out on your uh, form are things that are of interest to you. And what we do is we put that into a device that is like uh, a Google search engine. It goes out and it crawls over the internet and it downloads websites that have those keywords on them. They're also Skype enabled. So when we bring our second silo online, they're gonna be connected with a microwave link Look at that shit. This ain't. This is. This is the other. Uh, this is just one, or two silos that this guy has. All right. For who? The super elite. The super rich. Okay. And the kids in this elementary classroom can see the kids in the other elementary classroom. They can talk live, and so they don't feel like they're alone. Down on the store level, there's an aquaculture setup that can be used for raising fish and hydroponics for growing organic vegetables. You can have salad daily with this kind of setup. Oh yeah. Great. It's healthy. Yeah. yeah. So we'll we'll have tomatoes, onions, different kinds of lettuces, some kale, uh, blueberries, strawberries, blackberries. But even without that, there's still loads, and I mean loads, of stockpiled food. This really satisfies my prepper mode inside of me. I feel very safe, surrounded by tins of food. 
The silo is also kitted out with high-tech equipment to keep everyone in here alive for years. Backup fuel stores, a water filtration system, and even a system that scrubs volcanic ash out of the air, just in case. So if, let's say, Yellowstone were to erupt, the uh, scientists predict that we could have four to five feet of volcanic ash here. Well, that amount of debris in the air would overwhelm our air and NBC filters. So that pre-filter would come on and it takes all of the volcanic ash out of the air. Okay, so I'm not going to die in a super volcano situation. Not here. Okay. You're good. Originally built during the Cuban Missile Crisis in the 1960s, this Atlas missile silo was designed to withstand the launch of America's ICBMs. But turns out designing something to withstand a nuclear launch also makes it really good for withstanding a nuclear blast. It took Larry Hall and his team about nine months to clear out all that missile gear. See that? This is actually a nuclear silo. Wow. ICBM missiles, okay? What the Lord is going to bring judgment on Babylon the Great with, a.k.a. America. Before doubling the amount of concrete in the bunker and then fitting it out with the luxuries we see today. So this here is a nine foot thick reinforced wall, reinforced with steel. And this was here when they built the original missile silo. What can you throw at it? It was engineered to withstand a 10 kiloton nuclear warhead detonated within a half mile and that would produce a shockwave that would travel 2,000 miles an hour. So it can withstand anything up to and including a 2,000 mile an hour shockwave. What's the longest I could live down underground for? It was engineered to be able to be off-grid indefinitely. We've got five different power sources, including a, a wind turbine and geothermal uh, systems. So the limit is really, most practically, three to five years. That may or may not be enough time to ride out the apocalypse. A nuclear winter can last for months or years. And even after that, you're returning to a world with an altered climate, a depleted ozone layer, and a drastically reduced food supply. To get an idea of just how safe it is to live inside this bunker, I visited its very low-tech cousin down the road. Here, Hall has a second missile silo earmarked for a future survival condo. But aside from the new concrete floors, this place hasn't really changed since the Cold War. That's enough of that. Let's get back to the scriptures. Okay, as you see, Esau has been planning, all right, to ride out his destruction because he know he had but a short time. Let's go to the book of Amos. <clears throat> Chapter 9. Okay, this is Amos. Chapter 9 and verse 1, as you see, God's judgment unavoidable. Yeah, it's unavoidable, Esau. You're going to taste of the wrath of your heart by Shah Shah. All right? I want to start at verse 2. You know what? Let's start at verse 1. I saw the Lord standing upon the altar, and he said, Smite the lintel of the door that the post may shake. Cut them in the head all of them, and I will slay the last of them with the sword. He that fleeth of them shall not flee away, and he that escapeth of them shall not be delivered. Though they dig into hell, thence shall my hand take them. Though they climb up to heaven, thence will I bring them down. That's right. You know, they got certain um, aerial bases that they're trying to develop. In the heavens. Well, guess what? The Lord says he's going to bring them down from that uh, high lofty uh, so-called escape. And guess what? He said also he's going to what? Bring them out of the uh, the ground. You know, hell is a, is a condition. It's also what? Death. Well, under the ground, basically. Again, it says, though they dig into hell, thence will my hand take them. Though they climb up to heaven, thence will I bring them down. And though they hide themselves in the top of Carmel, right, in those uh, secret bases in, uh, in mountains, right? I will search and take them out thence, 
And though they hide, and though they be hid from my sight in the bottom of the sea, thence will I command the serpent, and he shall bite them. Yeah, Leviathan. Okay. They also got, uh, you know, different places where they can ride it, ride it out in the sea. Hey, all you got to do is Google these things. Okay. Let's go to the book of Jeremiah. This is Jeremiah chapter 16 and verse 16. It says, Behold, I will send for many fishers, saith the Lord, and they shall fish them. And after will I send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them from every mountain, you see, and every hill, and out of the holes of the rocks, you see. So the Lord is going to, after the destruction happened, okay, he's going to send for fishers. To what? I mean, excuse me, he's going to send for hunters to, to hunt them out of the holes of the rocks, okay? Verse 17, for my eyes are upon all their ways. They are not hid from my face, neither is their iniquity hid from my from mine eyes. So the Lord has already had you found out. Okay? Let's go to Revelation. Chapter 6. And let's get to the point. Verse 14. Okay? And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. What is that talking about? Those thermonuclear missiles hit in this place. And every mountain and island were moved out of their place. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. You see? So what is this saying, kings of the earth? Well, those who are in power, okay? The great men, the rich men, the chief captains, those chief captains, those military generals, right? The mighty men and every bond man, their servants, right? And every free man, yeah, it's going to be one or two stragglers that, that, that end up uh, coming in in those military bases, right? Hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and say it to the rocks and mountains, fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sat on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb, you see? For, for the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? So, when those thermonuclear missiles start hitting this place, they're going to they're gonna already have been alerted to uh, go into their, their bunkers, right? This is Jeremiah. We'll close it out here. You know, this is Bible prophecy showing itself forward in these last days. <clears throat> this is Jeremiah chapter 51 and verse 25. Behold, I am against thee, O destroying mountain. Who is this destroying mountain? Esau, Edom. Okay. Behold, I am against thee, O destroying mountain, saith the Lord, Yahweh Shabbat which destroyeth all the earth, and I will stretch out my hand upon thee, and roll thee down from the rocks, and will make thee a burnt mountain, you see? And they shall not take of thee a stone for a corner, nor a stone for foundation, but thou shalt be desolate forever, saith the Lord, Yahweh Shabbat you see? Oh, this planet is going to be a desolate wasteland. That's why they're going to have to go underground. Okay? <clears throat> I believe that's it on that. Yep. That's going to be it for the lesson. Lord willing, it's been edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh. By Hashem, Yahweh Shai. By Hashem, Rekakadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Lord willing, coming to you on the lesson. Till the next time I say, Shalom.